Enough with Embrace Debate. Pointless yelling at each other on ESPN and Fox. Yet very little actual content. It's time for a change. A voice from the fan. For the fan. The most compelling topics in sports. All covered here. This is Corbett's Corner. All right, welcome in. Big week. Uh, a lot of you going to be during the work week, during the work day, Thursday, Friday. Going to be a little distracted, right? It's Masters week. Uh, I'm here, Dylan Corbett at Augusta, 12th hole uh, for the visual audience, Matthew Cruz and Eddie Kortz. Uh, most of you know him as almost Hall of Fame better on Corbett's, uh, excuse me, Corbett's, uh, but also our hockey golf voice, Cardinal fan expert. Yes, so we like to get him on here and talk some Masters. Um, but first let's recap the college, you, you like college hoops as well, overall sports fan. So, um, let's, let's talk the uh, national title game, Baylor, uh, in the matchup that we were kind of all anticipating from the beginning. We figured these were the two top teams in college basketball. They were scheduled to play in the regular season. COVID eliminated that Matt, we crowned a champion last night. It was Baylor from the get go. Yeah. Baylor all over it. Kind of like you said, everyone expected that game to happen. Um, not everyone expected Baylor to win or let alone win convincingly. Uh, we were of that mindset. I believe all three of us were on Baylor money line plus 175. I had the future on both, but I, I mean, I thought Baylor's going to win. They're better defensively one through five. They absolutely killed on the O boards. Like they, oh my uh, God. they got Vital, a towel vital. <laughs> 50 vital, 47% of the time. But look, no, Baylor's guards are just elite on both ends, all three of them. David Mitchell, Jared Butler, Macy Oteague, offense, defense, they can do it all. Um, they're a great team. I don't want to take anything away from Gonzaga. Would Gonzaga have gone 31-0 and if they played in the Big Ten or Big 12? No, but they're still a really good team. They probably they would have been just like Michigan or Illinois at the worst, lose two or three times. Uh They'll be back again, as always. Will Mark Few ever win at all? I don't know. This was his best chance, that's for sure, though. I've got some good stats. We'll debate Mark Few here. But first, uh, Eddie, you saw your Illini get bounced early. Um, but then what do you think? You had Baylor, too. So, yeah, that was the route. All three of us were on the same side last night. Yeah, we were riding Baylor. I had him oh. plus 175 and plus four and a half in <laughs> cash. <laughs> oh, my God. We got to get you back on. <laughs> um okay so yeah a couple things there this is corbett's corner um we're going to be doing a mock draft podcast this is going to be fun i'm kind of getting this in the works so the nfl draft is coming up at the end of this month uh, we're, i'm going to try and get fans of every t- uh, you know if i have friends that have a separate fan base i'm going to try and get them on and we're going to have like a kind of a mock draft for our first round and kind of get all the insights there's been crazy trades too. the latest sam darnold but we'll save that maybe get some thoughts there towards the end um, so total bad beat. We all cash Baylor points, money line, uh, the over last night, <clears throat> just an absolute kick in the nuts. Uh, that looked like that was going to cash. And of course it goes under, um, let's see here. Zags betting favorite for next year. Uh, we were kind of debating this Matt last night when we were talking after the game, who do you like next year? You mentioned Michigan. What are some other teams you're thinking, uh, at the beginning of next year for college hoops way too early? One that I saw, I, I saw a list of someone's top 25, maybe at UCLA number one. They don't have one senior on their team. Yeah. Does Julian go pro? Possibly. Uh, I'm guessing nobody else is. You know, I'm guessing most guys will stay, might get a transfer. So um, UCLA will be viewed as a top five team. In Michigan, like I said, Baylor will probably be in that top five. Gonzaga will probably be in the top five. Um, there was. Oh God! I, I don't. There was a surprise, another surprise team in there that I we didn't talk about last night. But Ohio was. State was another team that I think uh, kind of not unlike Virginia, where they got bounced in the first round and win it all the next year. I think Ohio State's going to learn from that Oral Roberts, uh, Roberts upset and kind of come back with a vengeance this coming year. Um, so Io Desunmu uh, <laughs> goes goes to the draft for the Illini. Fred is Cokeburn coming back. What are the thoughts for Brad Underwood squad next year? I wouldn't be surprised to see him back. I mean, he really hasn't developed a jump shot yet. And to make it to the NBA, those big boys are shooting jump shots now. I mean, I would expect that'd be something he works on in the summer. I mean, I haven't really seen any, like, draft boards that are super high on him. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll see. This kind of depends. I would assume he'd come back. But they did lose Adam Miller, potentially. He's in the transfer portal. So Really? What's going on there? 
Matt? Well, uh, personally, it's a pro- it's a good move for him career-wise, NBA hopes-wise, because he's got a I – mean, He wants to lead a team. He's a 6'2 shooting guard. He's got to be the lead guard. He's got to show that he can be a point guard and have the ball in his hand. Um, and he wasn't going to do that at Illinois with Corbell in his hand. No, like he was going to get the ball plenty. He was going to – he could average 15 a game, you know, double the scoring, something like that with Illinois. But a lot of good players around, so it is what it is. Coburn, I do think he comes back as well. He will come back and absolutely dominate, but that, you know, a jump shot is exactly what Fred said. That's his chance to actually jump up draft boards and become a more complete player. Um, I think Illinois will be just fine. We knew Iowa was going to leave. Good for him. Um, going to get his jersey yeah. as soon as I see where he goes. Um, fun dude to watch. One of the best to do it. Uh, keep an eye on the portal though for everybody where i mean this thing's gonna really yeah. heat up in the next i mean starting now like guys are already been committing and um you still have guys entering the portal but portal but everyone's available everyone's ready so and i noticed i think we were all kind of looking out these way too early rankings baylor it's basically going to lose a lot right this was the year to win it because they had all that uh kind of older leadership all right so mark few has made 21 straight march madness dances he is now 0-2 in the finals. He's been a one seed three times. Uh, the, so basically two two times in the finals as a one seed, and one time he lost in the second round. With Kelly Olenek. I, I had them losing that year. So I'm going to kind of pose two arguments here. Mark Few is overrated. Mark Few is properly rated. Um, so in the last 21 years, who has won the most titles? A team has won four titles in the last 21 years. This is an open question, a little trivia there. Uh, you Duke. listening in your car can kind of do in your head at Duke. home. Duke? No. Eddie? Duke comes in with three. It's not UNC or Villanova. UNC comes in with three. Nova comes in with two. Hold on. You at home, you got it. Kentucky, is it? It's not a Big Ten school. The Big Ten hasn't even won one since no, 2000. It, had, it has to be like... It's be like Florida won two back-to-back. Florida, back Florida back comes back. in with two. This one's going to shock your freaking noggin. Four. 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 Uh, <laughs> Kentucky? I don't fucking know. <laughs> Yukon. Oh, shit. Yes. Connecticut. Jim Calhoun. And then, so here's the argument. So those are all the multiple champions. And again, this is the last 21 years since Mark Few took over Gonzaga and he's been to the tournament every single year uh, in the West Coast Conference. So that's the argument. There, there's not been a mid-major that's won in the last 21 years. In fact, the last mid-major, um, not counting kind of Villanova because Big E's for basketball, you got to give them chops, right? Um, in Connecticut, no, obviously. Yeah. Villanova um, is not a mid-major at all. No, exactly, right. UNLV in 1985. So it's very tough. Uh, that was Jerry Tarkanian, right? So it's very tough for a mid-major to do what they do. Mark Few, though, obviously does it every single year because it's Gonzaga. They're going to stay in that conference. Mark Few, is a, you know, he, he played his hand. He's at the end of his career. He's not going to try and prove it, at least I don't think. I think his legacy belongs at in Spokane. But Kevin Ali won a goddamn championship. How did Mark Few in 21 years, I know he's been there twice, and again, I'm just posing the argument, both sides. The critics are going to say, bro, 21 straight years, you've been a one seed three different times. Kevin Ali won. Butler made it back-to-back years. They didn't win, but Florida won two titles back-to-back. Like, when are you going to do it to be successful, Mark? I mean, he's beyond successful. He has a career eight. 0.836 0.836 weighing percentage. I don't care what conference he's in. Like, that's still insane to have a team that wins literally 30 games every single year. That's, with new that's, talent every year. Like, and with new guys. Now, I think he really will. I think in the next five or so years, he will get one because now he's getting the Jalen Suggs of the world. And he's fi- he, that was his first five star. Consider that. That, was his, that was his first five star recruit in 21 years so you, you typically need guys like that to win championships yeah. i there's a lot of coaches a lot of great coaches who haven't won any and won't win any i read an article in the last week or two a few interviewed and was a hot choice for the oregon job when dana altman went out there like seven or eight years ago few turned it down 
He said he couldn't accomplish what he could at Gonzaga. He could, he said he couldn't do that at Oregon. That's what he told them. Basically, yeah, so that was he will never win a national championship, but he thinks he can do it at Gonzaga. And so, I agree with you. He's a fantastic coach. And I saw the post game interview we had yeah. last night. Well, I mean, like, he's a great guy. You want to root for him? Yeah, I mean, he he deserves knocks for you know, never winning. That's fine, but um, I still I just I would say that there's a ton of coaches who have it and never will, and he's still got plenty of chances. Yeah, some other, uh, and we'll get into the Masters talk here again, getting underway Thursday. We'll post this on a Wednesday, uh, Corvus Corner. Um, Mello with Syracuse was another memorable uh, title win. Uh, Virginia, obviously, most recently. Uh, Maryland was also the one that stuck out. How many does Bayheim have? Is that his only one? It's have- his only one, I believe, unless okay, it was pre-1999. So, so Bayheim in 40, 45 years, 40 years, sure. only has one in the Big East at Syracuse, was in the ACC. They're, I don't know, they're in the ACC now. I agree, it, but he's that, got one. Isn't that – I mean, yeah, that's that's fine. It's one, but to me, th- that's no that's no better. Yeah, you got one with a generational talent like Carmelo Anthony. Yep. Uh, Eddie, Mark Few overrated, and then we'll get to the grass, the green. I mean, he's fine. I, mean, I don't really give a shit. It's the goddamn WCC. Is that even the right conference? I mean, a lot of people are always going to be a lot. Uh, a lot of people who don't watch basketball bring it up Pepperdine, which is just a comedically funny name for a university. I mean, those conference. games just late night, just something to watch on TV. Not too bad, but you just know Gonzaga is going to put a beat down on that conference year after year. So, correct. All right, Eddie, Masters week. I like Colin Morikawa, I like Daniel Berger. My thinking for that is we've seen it. it. It's kind of been like the Masters the last decade, I feel like, has been the breakthrough of the young guy. DJ finally wins it. Bubba finally won. Like Zach Johnson back in the day, he finally got uh, Spieth when he was on fire. Spieth, of course, obviously wins for the first time uh, in, what, four years, the Bolero Open this past weekend. He's getting all the money right now. Everyone's like, oh, Spieth, back-to-back weeks. I'm not thinking that. But uh, I want to get your thoughts on uh, overall the week ahead of Augusta here. I like, I actually do like Speed. Yeah. Uh, he's been playing really great golf. Six out of the last seven events, he's been, he's in been the on top fire. 15. He's just fucked out there on the course. Sorry, I lost you there. Yeah, he's been on fire. Um, so I think he got he was like 50 to one at, initially. Of course, these odds come out and you can bet on them for months at a time but matt have you keyed in on some guys correct i like your theme of it's like a new next young guy justin thomas is gonna yeah. get it done i'm taking him plus 1000 um here's a little bet i like don't ask questions you just place it paul yeah. casey first round leader 33 to 1 plus 3300 take it does he st- i don't know no that's keegan bradley i was gonna say does he still wear red shoes all the time but i was thinking of somebody else i think um yeah no i'm looking forward to it another thing good luck to all the guys getting vasectomies on this wednesday because it's like the most popular day of the year for male vasectomies because guys just sit down on the couch all weekend and watch the Masters. <laughs> wow that's a heady play honestly <laughs> pun intended i guess um okay i got a little dk lineup too some other yeah what do you think about the shambo eddie he's uh being a little bit coy i saw the headline about what's in his bag he's always is he getting a longer <laughs> driver what what is he is jesus christ i mean how is he going to again he just played uh what the masters in november and i think the four times he's played the masters he's always in like the 30s but he was 18 shots behind dj how's he going to contend this weekend I think it's going to be the same as usual. He's not doing anything to change his game, just trying to outpower the course. And I just don't see it happening here for him. I saw him on the range yesterday, just like absolutely murdering balls, though. He's looking all angry and shit after. I'm like, oh, my God, dude. I would not want to see this guy. I don't want to see this guy after a bad round because he might just fucking catch a driver in the face. No kidding. That looked painful. Uh, you ever going to golf Augusta? Is that like on your bucket list? How would one go about doing that? I don't even think that's possible for a common man. Wow. I think it is actually. Yeah. I think you have to get in touch with a member and there's only a certain amount of members or something like that. Okay. So then it's possible. If there's members. I would say it's possible, but like for us, (laughs) probably not. Bro, How do you know? You don't, you don't know anyone in Augusta, Georgia. I'm sure there's, uh, 
Actually, speaking of Augusta, Georgia, how about my guy Fat Pat Reed? Maybe a sleeper this weekend. You like oh, Pat you Reed? Can't... I know. Uh... I don't hate it, dude. Georgia alum. Okay. In Georgia State. Former Masters champ. <laughs> That's fine. You can like him, but let's not call him top 10 guys sleepers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's uh, – yeah, I guess he always contends at the Masters. I'd call think, him top 15. Like, I think he's, act like, ranked top. Up to maybe not. He's tier one or tier two, at least in those pools. He might be yeah, tier two. I think he's tier two. Yeah. Well, he's always a threat at Augusta. I think anyone that's put on a green jacket before is going to, except the, like the old guys that always come back, like Mike Weir. But shit, Mike Weir always throws up like a minus four, like, and gets to the week. Watch out for Freddie Couples, too. Yeah, uh, if, you <laughs> yeah, want yeah. Guy, if you want an old guy, Bernhard Langer. Yeah, Langer. Just, a, just an absolute dart beauty. thrower. He's a beauty. All right, I'm giving um, away my okay. – uh, sorry, Cruz, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I, a legit, another dark horse. He's tier two, tier three guy, maybe four. Joaquin Neiman. Yes. Plays ball. Is he a South African friend? Chilean. Chilean. The Chilean plays ball, and he's going to show up this weekend. He'll, he'll be top ten. You brought – so my lineup, I've got Neiman. We brought up Paul Casey, the Englishman. I've got him there. Corey Connors is a guy getting some steam. He was a guy that uh, you don't like. What is he, Canadian, Fred? You're not a Connors guy? Uh, how many Masters has he played at? Yeah, I mean, he's kind of a newer guy. I feel like he's one of these older dudes that kind of came on in the last two years. Um, yeah, I'm honestly not sure. He's very cheap on DraftKings. Victor Hovland's a young guy. Um, I've got in my lineup. He's, uh, he's a stud. Um, what else do I have here? How about John Rahm, the Spaniard? Is he going to get it done? That's a guy who, I mean, he's been a former world number one. It could be his weekend. Hey, he's fresh off having a kid as well. So that's right. A little, a little more energy there. Yeah. I took him and I do. So I'm doing two pools. I've been, I do two pools for the masses every year. I have Rahm in the, my tier one and one of them. Yeah. So I a tears. He, he's going to win at some point. So I want to be in on it. I want him to be leading, <laughs> leading the fucking horses. You guys yeah, see him flipping off the crowd the other week <laughs> at the match play? They're heckling him and he's yeah, he's a hot head. I love well, fans being back. I love it. I love at it. the last Masters back in December or November when it snowed, remember? According to Gina, uh, but I said fade him <laughs> because he used all his luck on that shot on the part three where he rolled it. In yes, there. where he skipped it across the pond. I was just thinking about that. Cam Smith, the Aussie, was the only other guy around it out my DraftKings lineup with. I like that. Um, okay, so think any other question do we think any other guys who were like in contention last time that were like aren't usually do we do they repeat with a good performance like Sanjay or Cam Smith? I get Cam Smith's pretty solid, yeah. Um, who I, uh, I love Tell, Sanjay, Tell, uh, finished fifth. Yeah, I saw a stat Sanjay's first on tour and driving in like 148th and iron play or something like that. Dude, he was so hot at uh, right before COVID. He won the Honda Classic, I think. And then, uh, sorry, I'm in the process of putting an offer on the house, so my phone's blowing up right now. Um, but yeah, so again, Fertelli's a good guy. I what about Willie Zalortis? I think he's Matthew Wolf was kind of this guy last year where he was the young up and comer. Um, he's been great, uh, but then he kind of fell off this past year. Um, Zalortis is just a like a cut. He's a weekend machine, and he just finishes like top fifty. Uh, but yeah, who knows I, what he's going to do? I have him in one of mine as well. Louis. Louis. What do you guys think about Louis Ustazen? Love me some Louis. I love the gap between his teeth. He's always smiling out there having a good time. <laughs> I think I had him yeah. last Masters pool. Um, Not a bad pick. He usually plays pretty good there on like Thursday, Friday. I guess this will be a good kind of wrap up question. Again, this is Eddie Quartz, Matthew Cruz, and I'm Dylan Corbett. Masters pod, we wrapped up the national title. Um, and we're going to have an NFL mock draft pod before the end of the month. So what is going to be the winning score? I'm thinking minus 19. I mean, people are putting up low scores at Augusta lately. Any take? Uh, I have minus 17. Yes. I'm going to go like minus 14. Yeah. The course is going to, I always root for the course. Well, yeah, I was going to say, there was like one year, I think, uh, eight years ago, where like somebody won and it was like minus four or something or my, <laughs> on the weekend. It was like, oh, my God. Usually that's like U.S. Open shit. Um, 
What, so, yeah, yeah, that's a question for another time. So it is a good time for golf because we've got, what, the U.S. Open, the Open Championship, the PGA Championship all coming up this summer. Um, shit, Matthew Cruzan and I are going to be checking out a Twins game this Saturday, the homestand. Good stuff. Uh, we'll have to make a trip up to Milwaukee and Eddie Cruz's oh, territory. The with the free tickets. Yeah, no kidding. My God. Um, that's good stuff. Corbett's corner here as we post this on a Wednesday masters this weekend. Who do you like? Uh, we'll talk to you and get just content throughout the week. Corbett sports.com Eddie Quartz, Matthew Cruz, and I'm Dylan Corbett. We'll talk to you later.